Okay, ready to go. Okay, this is my most excellent assistant, Nick. We just okay. met. Okay. You're going to watch him do this case wonderfully. So what we have here is a Globus robot um, with a, we're going to pretend like we have a L5 spondylolysis. So half the case is planning. And planning for the spondylolysis is kind of humbling. We could see right here, you could almost hit the joint below, you could almost hit the joint above. And you could do really cool things with the planning software. You can rotate it 360 degrees, make certain that you're not hitting a joint. You could follow the screw tra trajectory from entering the bone, missing the joint, staying in the bone, missing the joint, and staying in the bone. And we can also plan so that the skin incision will be one uh, rather than two separate incisions. And pretty importantly, this kind of subtle, we have to make sure that we're not going to hit the spinous process on the way in. And there have been cases where the spinous process is in the way. You see it ahead of time. You plan to pop it out with a rongeur or just break it, push it out of the way, put it back in at the end of the case. So now we've done all the planning, and now we'll do the surgery. So we step on the pedal. Is it ready? Oh. Okay, we step on a pedal, and this will bring us to the trajectory, we hope, <laughs> of the right L5 screw. So there is still more fiddle factor here than we want. There we go. And you know, the truth is when I do a robot spondy case, it takes me about an hour and 20 minutes. When I do a 13 level fusion with 20 screws, it takes two hours and 10 minutes. So robots slow you down, there's no question. Um, but for things like this, I think the patients benefit. Okay, so this is the trajectory of the L5 right screw. I look down the tube, I draw a dot right on the skin. Now, we're going to set it up for the left screw. <coughs> so again, we look down the tube, we make a dot, and now we can make a two centimeter incision in general. We're gonna push this out of the way. Knife, please, thank you. Make about a two centimeter incision. We might do it a little bit bigger here. Knife is back. And he's pulled over just a little bit. We're going to go for the right screw first. And what I love about this robot in particular is at any moment you step on it and it recenters. Make sure you're in the right place. Okay, so we're green. We take the instrument I hate the most. We have to figure out something better than this. It's called the machete. We take the machete down, pop it right to the bone. There's a little bit of trust here. We're gonna feel it on bone, turn it the other way, feel it on bone. The machete is back, and frequently, you know, if we know there was, there's gonna be two separate fascial incisions, we'll cut through the skin, move the skin over and make a separate fascial incision. In this particular time, I think it's gonna be okay this way. So now, I'm gonna recenter again. So every time we might move something, recenter, it just takes a second. Take the burr, this is a round tip burr. You know, people have talked a lot in the past about skiving, you know, the idea if you push it too hard, it just skives right off. The way around that is you just go back and forth like you're tapping. This is a side cutting burr. If you're finding you're having a whole bunch of problems skiving, yeah, maybe you should find a different profession. We should be able to fix that at this point. So now we very carefully come down and feel bone. So right now I feel bone. I didn't even look up yet. I'm feeling bone. When you look at it, ah, you can't see anything. What went wrong? <laughs> you could blame me. Say I was in the way. Okay, we'll hide it again. Click the array towards me. 
Okay, so we did it again. And this is real life. You know, if it's not perfect, we don't proceed. So now I feel that I'm on bone. So we have a fair amount of area for improvement. <laughs> it actually is not this bad in real life. You ready? Okay, so now I feel that I'm on bone, and we see that we're on bone. We all go. We always want to say that what we're feeling is what we're seeing. So we just carefully go up and down, you know, only about three, four millimeters. We don't need more than that. We're done. Now I'm going to reset it again, make sure we're in the right place, just in case there's been any movement of soft tissue. Well, I don't think you're in skin. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna reset it one more time. Next, we have a sharp drill. This could go too far, so we make sure it doesn't. Pop this into place. And again, we're gonna feel, are we on bone? It feels like we're on bone. And do you see how the drill has gone in the bone about five millimeters, just like we want it to, because we burned in about five millimeters. Now we're gonna tap up and down gently. We feel bone the whole time. Oftentimes, as we go to the spondylolytic area, it's very hard because there's been attempts at heals, healing over time. And we feel bone, we feel bone, we feel bone, and it looks just like it does on the screen. I hope at some point I'm wearing glasses where I'm looking where I'm working instead of looking uh, at the screen. And right now I could feel that I'm really hard bone right there, right where it should be. Sometimes I'll go through a little bit. I think it's a stronger screw, sometimes not. So we're now done with the drill. Next thing we're going to do is put in the guide wire. Now again, here I think it's absolutely key that we feel that we're in bone. And let's take a image, could we? So what we're gonna do here to take an image is we pop off the end effector. We may have to raise the table. And it feels like this is probably in bone. Let's make certain. Whenever we're ready, we're gonna get a lateral image. Wow, that's a pretty tough image to see. I think we're okay. Great. Now we're going to go back to robotics. You know, now in real life, I wouldn't accept that poor quality image, but being that I'm one of the things between you and cocktails, we will accept that poor quality image. And let's bring the robot back to place. Yep. And you know what I often do here? If we've taken an image and we know that the guide wire is in place, we can just put the screw in. There's no reason to spend extra time here. And again, we want to feel, does it feel like it's on bone? Yes, it does. And we could either do this, can we pull this out with something, the guide wire? You do it by hand if you can. And we go down and feel that the screw has hit the end point. And there we have a really strong bite, a surprisingly strong bite. And that's it. We have placed a screw. The next thing I would do in real life is take a neuromonitoring probe, poke it in and into the screw and make sure that it, that it uh, is less than six you know, milliamps, which is the same thing I do for a pedicle screw, and reach in my pinky finger right there, and I feel the head of the screw right on the lamina, so we know we're in the right place by feel. And lastly, let's get a fluoro. So. Looks good, do you wanna get a uh, AP, would that be too hard?